I want to talk about U.S. political interference abroad, uh, more specifically U.S. political interference here in Southeast Asia in the Kingdom of Thailand where I am based. There are general elections coming up in May of this year and the United States is uh, greatly interested in influencing the outcome of these elections. I want to talk about why the U.S. is meddling here in Thailand. I want to talk about who they are backing, uh, how they are doing it, and how this is going to impact uh, growing U.S.-Chinese tensions in the region. So why? why? Why is the U.S. meddling in Thailand? They're meddling in Thailand because they are meddling everywhere along China's periphery, from Central Asia to East Asia and everywhere in between. Here in Southeast Asia specifically, the United States has already maneuvered a U.S. client regime into power in Malaysia to Thailand's south. In Myanmar to Thailand's west, the military there actually ousted a U.S.-backed client regime in 2021, headed by Aung San Suu Kyi, who's been backed by the U.S. for decades. Uh, since 2021, the U.S. has backed violent terrorism there to either entirely cripple Myanmar as a functioning nation state or to get their client regime reinstalled back into power. In Cambodia to Thailand's east, the government there has embarked on an extensive campaign to uproot U.S. foreign interference. Uh, they have uprooted all of the U.S. funded media groups, these fake human rights organizations. They've also uprooted the U.S. backed political opposition party. Uh, and this has all culminated in the sentencing to prison for 27 years of the Cambodian opposition leader, Kem Soka. And I've covered him in a previous video. And uh, I talked about how he was caught on camera admitting that he was working with the US government to overthrow the Cambodian government in a Serbian style color revolution. Yeah, he, he actually talked about how the US overthrew the government in Serbia and how they are going to help him do the same in Cambodia. So this is the geopolitical landscape Thailand's general elections will be unfolding within come May of this year. Thailand itself has a very strong and growing relationship with China and this is why the US is meddling in Thailand. They want to stop that, reverse it, and if possible transform Thailand into a, a hostile proxy uh, against China. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this because a lot of people still think to this day that Thailand is a major non-NATO ally of the United States. They talk about how Thailand hosted U.S. troops during the Vietnam War as if they had a choice. Uh, but the reality is today, Thailand's largest trade partner is China. From Harvard University's Atlas of Economic Complexity, China, together with Hong Kong, which is part of China, it's, makes up almost a fifth of Thailand's exports. You can see the United States is Thailand's second largest export market, but China is clearly first. And uh, Washington's desire to create instability all across Asia is going to affect Thailand significantly because the majority of its exports go uh, to the rest of Asia. And the same goes for imports, and you can see China is a very significant source of imports, uh, greater than the U.S. and Europe combined. China is also uh, the, one of the largest or the largest investor here in Thailand, foreign investment here in Thailand. It's also uh, a very important partner in terms of infrastructure and development. So, so Thailand, uh, Thailand is working with China to establish its 5G telecommunication uh, infrastructure. They're also building a high-speed rail line that will connect Thailand to the rest of China through Laos, which already has a operational high-speed rail link, which is already paying uh, dividends in terms of trade and tourism for Laos, uh, which before China came in and built highways and railways for Laos was a landlocked and deeply impoverished nation. China is also Thailand's largest source of tourism. Now, there's a misconception that Thailand's largest industry is tourism. It is not. It is a newly industrialized country. Its main industry is manufacturing and agriculture. Tourism is not insignificant, uh, but it is not its most important industry. However, uh, before the COVID restrictions kicked in, more tourists were coming 
from China to Thailand, then from all of the West combined. And now that everything is opened up again, we're going to see that trend return. Something that might surprise a lot of people out there is the fact that Thailand has a very close military relationship with China. For years now, they have been replacing a lot of their aging US military hardware with Chinese alternatives. This includes uh, VT-4 main battle tanks, different kinds of infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers, naval vessels, including surface vessels, and also Thailand's first modern submarines, and also mobile air defense systems, which are very important in uh, modern combat. Thailand and China also jointly develop weapon systems. So let's take a look at this from Army Recognition. Army of Thailand takes delivery of the first local made DTI-1 rocket launcher system. This is a guided multiple launch rocket system developed jointly with China and has a longer range than HIMARS. It's very similar to HIMARS uh, or Russia's Tornado S. Now, Thailand still buys weapons from the United States, but in much smaller numbers. Uh, they do conduct military exercises every year with the United States via Cobra Gold. Uh, a lot of people talk about Cobra Gold and how that is proof that Thailand is, is uh, a close ally of the United States. I just want to point out this from this Chinese military news website that uh, China participates in Cobra Gold also in humanitarian assistance and disaster relief exercises. So what you see is Thailand not picking sides they, they want to do business with everyone. They don't want to pick sides and they most certainly don't want to be used as a proxy by either side. Uh, but the reality is China is on the rise. It's located right here in the region. The United States is located on the other side of the Pacific Ocean and it's in decline. They're still going to do business with the US, but if Thailand is pursuing its own best interests, there will be an emphasis on doing business with China. That will be a priority. But the United States, as you can see, these are extensive and growing ties. The United States is uh, very determined to stop this, reverse this, and even transform Thailand into a hostile proxy against China. So who are the groups that the U.S seeks to put into power here in Thailand. There are two main opposition parties, both headed by two different billionaires. One is Prathai, headed by Taksin Chinawat. He was formerly prime minister from 2001 to 2006. He was ousted in a military coup in 2006, but before the military ousted him from power, uh, he did things like privatize Thailand's national uh, hydrocarbon concerns. He committed Thai troops to the U.S. occupation of Iraq, very unpopular here in Thailand at the time. He also allowed the U.S. to use Thai territory for its extraordinary rendition program, essentially CIA black sites where people were tortured. Uh, and he also attempted to sign a U.S.-Thai free trade agreement, very lopsided in, in America's favor. Uh, and he tried to do that without parliamentary approval. Uh, before he became prime minister, he was actually an advisor to the US-based equity firm, Carlyle Group. So just, just to give you an idea of his background, he is one of these people they groomed before getting into political power to specifically transform Thailand into an obedient US client regime. And when he was in power, in addition to all of these other things he did, which were unpopular at the time and have left Thailand damaged to this day. He also attempted to consolidate political control over the country. And he did this by attempting to displace and undermine the Thai military and the Thai constitutional monarchy. The Thai military and monarchy for centuries have unified Thai people and protected the country from foreign conquest. Uh, Thailand is the only nation in Southeast Asia that was not colonized by European power. So keep that in mind. Uh, recognize that these two institutions are targets for the U.S., specifically because they protect the country from exactly the type of interference the U.S. is attempting to carry out in Thailand. After Taksin Chinawat was ousted in a 2006 uh, military coup, uh, in 2009 and again in 2010, he organized 
uh, extremely violent street protests in an attempt to seize back power, essentially what we now recognize as the color revolution. And they literally were wearing red shirts. In 2010, the protests included 300 heavily armed militants who brought war weapons into the capital, Bangkok. And they fought with Thai troops and police over the course of weeks. There were gun battles in the streets. It led to widespread uh, uh, citywide arson and it left nearly a hundred people killed including troops and police and at the time the western media organizations like cnn reuters the bbc they did what we see them now do all, all the time when supporting a u.s backed color revolution they covered up the violence of the opposition, they exaggerated the responses of the police and military, and they did everything in their power to undermine the targeted, gov the targeted government in pursuit of regime change. So there's Taksin Chinawat, his Thai party, which uh, because Taksin is also a fugitive, he resides outside of Thailand. He has, he has run the political party through various family members. His sister was briefly prime minister from 2011 to 2014. She was ousted in a military coup. And now it is his daughter. His daughter is going to uh, essentially be a placeholder for him as head of Pua Thai. The other billionaire the United States is backing in upcoming elections is Tanaton Juang Rung Gruangit and his Move Forward Party, which was previously called future forward so if you if you hear either one of these sometimes they're used interchangeably because they're essentially the same thing uh, it's important to remember that tanaton and taxin essentially are working together uh, taxin focuses on uh, the rural population and tanaton is targeting young voters and people living in the city it's, it's, it's a branding exercise they work together they they have openly worked together before polls uh before elections and they've also worked together in the streets afterward to, in in these protests that they organize tax and chinawat was a carlisle advisor and when he was prime minister he openly served u.s interests at the at the expense of thailand uh, so we understand that what about tanaton he, he has not become prime minister not yet uh, what is his relationship with Washington? Before the 2019 general elections, he actually traveled to the United States. And because he, he secured a U.S.-based lobbying firm to organize his trip, the Foreign Agent Registration Act in the U.S. required all of the paperwork to be uh, publicly filed. And uh, we have the paperwork right here. And this tells us who he met. And if you go down to pages 25 and 26 of this document, and the link to this will be in the video description below, you will see all of the people he was talking to. He talked to members of the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee, representatives of the U.S. State Department, U.S. aid representatives, various U.S. media organizations, including Bloomberg, uh, The New York Times, and NBC as well as Freedom House, which is a subsidiary of the U.S. National Endowment for Democracy, the organization that, that funds political interference, U.S. political interference all around the globe, including right here in Thailand. Also during his trip to the United States, he visited uh, Virgin's Hyperloop One testing facility in Nevada, in the middle of the desert. He visited this Hyperloop testing facility. Now, the Hyperloop is uh, a prototype at best. It has never actually moved a real passenger anywhere yet, and it probably won't for years to come, if ever it moves passengers in any real sense. As soon as he got back from Thailand, all of these places, all of these people he visited immediately began translating into action. So uh, one of the first things he did when he got back was condemned the Thai Chinese high-speed rail project, which at the time was already under construction. And he claimed that Thailand should instead build the, the Hyperloop, which again, does not even exist yet. Uh, so this is from Bloomberg. Thailand needs Hyperloop, not China built high-speed rail. Junta critic says, and it says a tycoon turned politician who opposes Thailand's military government 
has criticized its 5.6 billion high-speed rail project with China because Hyperloop technology offers a more modern alternative. An option such as Richard Branson's Virgin Hyperloop One, which is working on building networks of pods traveling at airplane-like speeds, is better for Thailand as it would help the nation be a technological leader, according to the future forward party head, Tanaton Juang Ruang Ruang Gip. He also organized a media event uh, when he got back to Thailand. And well, you listen to the, the question that is asked and his answer to it. On the Paris from the German media, I have a more general question because you speak about innovation and how uh, Thailand can benefit from it in the future. If you develop these things more on your own track. Um, at the same time, we have a big discussion about the road in China. How do you see this in connection are they compatible? Uh, what, what is the well, reason? we want to leave alliance the, the game of power between um, big nations. I think over the past five years, we have been giving too much importance in dealing with China. Um, we want to reduce that, and we want to leave alliance our relationship to the Europe, to the Japan, to the US more. So if you missed that, what he said was, I think over the past five years, we have been giving too much importance to China. We want to reduce that and rebalance our relationship with Europe, with Japan, and with the US more. If this, this high-speed rail line is completed from China all the way to Thailand, perhaps even to Malaysia, it's going to supercharge uh, economic cooperation across the entire region. It's going to make it that much harder for the US to reach in, interfere, and rearrange things at will. That is, that is Tanaton's role. That is Taksin's role in all of this. And we've seen other US-backed client regimes upon taking power, say in Ukraine in 2014, or on the island province of Taiwan in 2016, they irrationally cut ties with their most important economic partners. In Ukraine's case, it was Russia, and their economy and industry cratered. For Taiwan, it's the rest of China. They're irrationally trying to cut ties with the rest of China, and it was wrecking their economy. And for Thailand, by trying to cut ties with China, irrationally canceling these, these projects that are obviously going to benefit Thailand, uh, it is the same process of self-inflicted damage simply to spite China uh, to Washington's benefit at the expense of Thailand. So I hope that kind of gives you a, a clear picture of who the U.S. is is backing, has backed for many years. In, in Taxon's case, they have backed him for many, many years uh, before he even became prime minister in 2001. And now they're also backing Tanaton and uh, a Thai and move forward. Again, this is a branding exercise. They are working together, but they're targeting different segments of the voting population. Let's get into the protests because the, the protests that have been ongoing in Thailand since 2019, I've covered this extensively and I'll, I'll put a link uh, to some of my older videos about these and you can see how, how violent they were getting also. Uh, these protests started in 2019, right after the general election. Tanaton Juang Rung Rung gets party, Future Forward was disbanded. He immediately began organizing protests and he himself was leading them. We could uh, just go back to articles in 2019 like this. This is from Thai PBS World. Tanaton vows to bring people onto streets at their rally in downtown Bangkok. And there he is. Uh, right there, leading the rallies himself. The article says, thousands of supporters of Future Forward Party turned out for an anti-military rally called by its leader, Tanaton Juang Rung Ruang Git. Addressing the demonstrators, Tanaton said the rally was just a harbinger of more political activities against the Prayut government. He threatened to bring people to the streets next month. So this is, again, this is a US-backed opposition figure who didn't win the elections, uh, because he violated electoral laws, his party was dissolved, and so he's trying to reverse all of this extrajudicially out in the streets with mobs, uh, just as the U.S. has done with it, uh, opposition groups it's, it's backing all around the world. Uh, so he was leading these protests himself openly, and then very quickly he faded into the background in a more supportive role, and these NED-funded organizations took over. 
Now, it is through the National Endowment for Democracy, the NED, and its subsidiaries, which include the uh, International Republican Institute, the National Democratic Institute, Freedom House, and all of these other organizations like USAID, and also uh, private uh, sector foundations like Open Society. They're, they all work in concert. They fund all of these opposition groups uh, here in Thailand and everywhere else. I've I've read many times the, the Guardian article about how the U.S. was behind the protests in, from 2000 to 2004 in Serbia, Belarus, Georgia, and Ukraine. They, they openly admit that it was the NED behind all of those protests, and they do it here in Asia as well. There's also these uh, annual forums like the Oslo Freedom Forum. And this is something that the, the BBC itself admits that uh, this is a, a, a Western government funded forum that trains opposition groups around the world to go back to their countries and overthrow their respective governments. And uh, this is a clip from the BBC's report on the Oslo Freedom Forum. This may not evoke the spirit of the barricades, but the teaching here is to be successful, to topple a government for good. You have to be organized and to plan meticulously. And activists here have been involved in helping to organize the current protests in Hong Kong. Their plan to put thousands of people on the streets of the territory was in fact hatched nearly two years ago. And it's interesting because uh, these Hong Kong protesters led by Joshua Wong uh, Tadaton actually traveled to Hong Kong while a, a member of Thailand's parliament and met with Joshua Wong right here. Uh, this article from the South China Morning Post. Joshua Wong spurs Chinese embassies in Thailand and Singapore into PR action. And what happened was the, the Chinese government condemned Thailand for one of their members of parliament interfering in China's internal political affairs. Not only was the Oslo Freedom Forum openly backing the Hong Kong protests, admittedly, according to the BBC, and not only was Tanaton meeting with Joshua Wong in Hong Kong, Tanaton himself was invited uh, to, to every Oslo Freedom Forum uh, confab for the last several years. He was even a speaker. Uh, this is his webpage on the Oslo Freedom Forum website. Uh, this was the most recent one he was at, 2022. Uh, you can see he took pictures of these little floor mats that they had at the Oslo Freedom Forum with the, the leader of North Korea, uh, the leader of Russia, Russian President Vladimir Putin, uh, the leader, uh, the president of Venezuela, uh, and this, these are all pictures of him there at the Oslo Freedom Forum. And who funds the Oslo Freedom Forum? Who funds this school for revolutionaries that are training opposition groups to then go home and overthrow their respective governments? Well, here's an archived list of the Oslo Freedom Forum's 2022 sponsors, it includes the Norwegian government, so that this is a European government funding political sedition around the globe. Twitter, uh, this was before Elon Musk bought Twitter. Amazon, Jigsaw, which is a subsidiary of Google, and the Freedom Fund. And the Freedom Fund, in turn, is funded by the U.S. government. If you scroll down, you will see uh, not just the Norwegian government, not just the U.K. Foreign Office or Home Office, but also the United States Department of State right there. So, so Tanatan Joang Rung Ruangket, he, he traveled to the United States to meet U.S. government representatives uh, in Washington, uh, including representatives from USAID and Freedom House, a subsidiary of the NED. These are the, the funding arms that are going to sponsor the opposition groups that are going to support his protest. When he got back to Thailand, lost the elections, had his party dissolved, and he was leading the protest, it was all of these NED funded organizations that came in and supported the protests. If you go to the NED's official website, Thailand, for Thailand, all the programs they're funding in Thailand, and you scroll down and you look at the nature of these programs, if Russia or China were sponsoring anything like this in the United States, it would be immediately labeled foreign interference, uh, even treason.
and uh, this is what the U.S. is more or less openly doing. You'll notice if you go through this list, there's not a lot of uh, organizations mentioned by name because they're trying to obfuscate who exactly they're funding in Thailand because it is blatant political interference. But I, I will tell you who these organizations are. So uh, in terms of news organizations, you've got Pracha Thai. And if you go to their website, you'll notice this annoying banner begging for money. Uh, and then if you go to About Pracha Thai and you scroll down, you will see funding sources and you will see they receive every single year millions of Thai bot every single year from the US government through the National Endowment for Democracy here, Open Society, and uh, other organizations like uh, Henrik Boll Foundation associated with the Green Party in Germany, which is now uh, working with the United States closely to, to perpetuate their proxy war against Russia and Ukraine. So that's Prachatai, funded by the US government through the National Endowment for Democracy. Here is Binar News. Uh, and they're openly funded by the United States Agency for Global Media. There's also uh, another media organization, ESAN Record. If you go to National Endowment for Democracy's archived uh, disclosure for 2019 and you scroll down, you will see ESAN Record listed here. What these US government funded media organizations do is promote the protests. They, they promote them, they cover up the violence carried out by the protesters, they exaggerate or fabricate claims regarding the, the government, both in terms of how they handle the protests and in terms of uh, policy. And they're also going to promote the opposition ahead of these elections. Now there's also groups that the US government funds dealing with the protests themselves. So the first is Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, and uh, their, one of their lawyers, Anand Nampa, is actually one of the core leaders of the ongoing protest. So this is Frontline Defenders. It's an open society funded front that attempts to provide protection and support for all, all of the US funded agitators around the globe, including Anand Nampa right here. And they list his affiliation as Thai Lawyers for human rights. And if you go to the 2014 NED disclosure regarding Thailand and you scroll down, you will see under Union for Civil Liberty, Thai Lawyers for Human Rights mentioned by name. So that, that is a US government funded organization whose lawyer serves as a core leader of the protests. These are US government funded and backed protests. There is also an organization called ILAW. If you go to ILAW's official website right here and you go to about us and you scroll down you will see them list national endowment for democracy open society and a couple of other organizations all foreign all foreign organizations funding them what were they doing during the protests this is what they were doing during the protests i law launches petition for charter rewrite a u.s government funded organization organized a petition to rewrite Thailand's constitution. Think about the implications of that. This is what the article says. The Internet Law Reform Dialogue, also known as ILA, a human rights NGO, has launched a campaign seeking signatures from 50,000 voters to sponsor a motion for a constitution rewrite. Uh, activities on the day will include a lecture on the importance of amending the constitution by the director of ILA. So, a U.S. government-funded organization is not only organizing the petition, they're also uh, creating the structure for the constitutional rewrite. Imagine if China or Russia were funding a opposition group in the United States petitioning to rewrite the U.S. Constitution. Just imagine how unacceptable that would be. This is what the United States is doing in Thailand. And ILAW is still around, and they are going to use their platform ahead of the elections, and they're going to use their platform amid any sort of political instability that follows the elections. These are organizations to keep an eye on. They were at every single protest with their tent and all of their office equipment that is funded by, uh, funded, paid for by US taxpayers to collect signatures and to pass out all kinds of material promoting this constitution rewrite.
underwritten by the U.S. government. So blatant foreign interference in violation of the U.N. Charter, which protects political independence and prohibits political interference in another nation's uh, uh, internal affairs. This is what the U.S. is doing in Thailand. The United States doesn't just uh, fund these organizations. They also provide different types of political and public support. So, for example, we have this from 2018, the International Women of Courage Award. This is from the U.S. State Department's official website. Uh, the founder of Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, whose lawyer is one of the core leaders of the protests. Uh, back in 2018, she traveled to Washington, D.C., and she was given this award. There is her name, Silikan Chelun Seali of Thailand. Another example of this uh, political and public support that the U.S. is also providing the, the Thai opposition uh, can be illustrated by this incident in 2019. So the, the title of the article is Foreign Ministry Tells Off Diplomatic Corps for Supporting Tan Tan. The, the picture is uh, of these U.S., British, and European uh, embassy staff surrounding Tanaton in a police station as he was summoned on charges uh, for sedition. Uh, so what, the, what they're basically saying is we are standing behind Tanaton, and everyone knows what the implications are of that. Uh, if Thailand tries to hold Tanaton accountable for any of the things he does, the West will do what they always do to nations that don't uh, obey Western dictates. They will target them with sanctions, they will destabilize them politically, and they will attempt to overthrow the government and also the institutions involved in holding their proxies accountable. That is exactly what that was. And if you look at the article, they list the, the nations, France, Netherlands, United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, Finland, Belgium, and a delegation from the European Union, the usual suspects. And after the, the Thai Ministry of Foreign Affairs condemned this, uh, it says many embassies later issued statements defending their representatives and their action. In, in other words, unrepentant, blatant political interference in another nation's internal affairs. Something that would never be tolerated by the United States or these European nations, yet something they constantly impose on various targeted nations, including Thailand. Come May and the the elections, uh, there's obviously there's two possibilities. The U.S.-backed opposition gets into power or they don't. And if they don't, they'll go back to violent street protests to try to either reverse electoral outcomes or to, to just uh, divide, destabilize, and disrupt the country as much as possible. Washington's agenda is to isolate China by either surrounding it with hostile client regimes or to just destabilize and disrupt them to the point where China cannot do business with them. Either way, China ends up isolated. So that, that will be what happens if a U.S.-backed opposition party cannot get into power. If they do get into power, I imagine they're going to try to cancel major deals with China, including the high-speed rail project, possibly a lot of the military procurement that's going on. Uh, with China. Uh, they'll, they'll also, as, as they have always done, they will begin running the country into the ground. This is what happened the last time the U.S. client regime got into power in Thailand from 2011 to 2014. They completely wrecked the country. Public uh, resentment grew, and then it was possible for the rest of Thailand to organize uh, what is essentially a counter-color revolution protests using all of the same tricks that the U.S. uses only to remove a U.S. client regime rather than install it into power. So it'll require, that, that will require a lot of patience. Either way, the country faces political instability. It has faced political instability for uh, two decades now. And this is going to continue as long as the U.S. is able to interfere in the internal political affairs of nations around the globe with impunity. Thailand had been trying to pass different laws to to block foreign interference, uh, but the, again, the U.S. mobilized its networks, including the media, and they created enough pressure on the Thai government uh, for them to eventually withdraw, just like what we saw in Georgia recently. So these are all things to keep in mind. This is something I'm going to probably cover more and more as the election draws near. This is a good introduction to uh, Thailand 
and how the U.S. is interfering in it, I think. Uh, if you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Uh, check the video description below for all of the links that I referenced. There's quite a few of them here. Also, check the video description for other places you can find and follow my work. Uh, there's also options there for helping support my work. I don't monetize my YouTube channel. If an ad pops up, feel free to skip it because it's not helping me out at all. If you do want to support my work, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee and also Patreon. And to everyone who has been helping out, whether it's one-time donations, month-to-month uh, -month donations, or even if you're just helping share this work with others, I greatly appreciate that. That is what makes this work possible. So thank you again, and as always, thank you for watching.